Hey guys, good to see everybody again. Today, I'd like to walk y'all around some fill equipment. Obviously, share with you what I use here on the channel and why I use it. And we'll probably get into a little bit of controversial talk as well. But before we get into all that, you know, there's a lot of powder burning guys and gals moving from that part of the industry into air guns. And when they first start researching this, one of the comments I often get is that the whole fill equipment genre is overwhelming, it's intimidating, and it's expensive. So you marry all those together and you get an off-putting recipe that turns them back towards their powder burners. So, you know, even with all the information, that all the good information that's out there on the YouTubes and the forums, there's some misinformation as well. And we're going to get into that a little bit today. Um, but I want to bring you guys through you know, some basics of what I use, why I use it, what I've been using, some new stuff I've got to kind of test and give you guys my thoughts on, and, uh, and we'll go from there, okay? But um, this all started for me about five years ago when I started the YouTube channel, or channels. If you're new around here, this is not my primary YouTube channel. This is a sister channel, a first-person classroom type setting to the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, which is my bigger channel, AEAC Home. It's over there. You'll get full reviews of compressors and tanks and air guns and show coverage and event coverage and trade shows and all that good stuff. That's not what this is here. This is more let's take our time and, uh, <clears throat> and have some dialogue. But five years ago when I got my start, I started receiving compressors and tanks from sponsors to help me build the channel because they liked what I was doing for the industry. And one of those big sponsors right out of the gate was Air Guns of Arizona or Precision Air, Precision Air Gun Distribution out of uh, out of Phoenix, Arizona, and they have a brand that they had that they cultivated. It's theirs. It's called the Omega Line. You can see it right here. They have a Facebook page. They have a website. They have an Instagram. You can go to AirGunsOfArizona.com and read all about the great supplies they have. But long and short of all that is, I've been using their stuff here on the channel for about five years. Um, I haven't been using exclusively their product. I've had products come through from Daystate, from Air Venturi, from Hotson, you know, these other companies that have other compressors, uh, specifically value priced compressors for the air gun consumer that I've reviewed as well. And there's going to be even more of that coming, I'm told, over the coming months from those, uh, those other brands. But um, about four years ago, I reviewed for the first time the Omega Supercharger which is basically, <clears throat> let me make a little bit of room here and we'll get back to some of this other stuff, which is, which is basically a single piston version of what you see here, okay? This is a non-portable compressor. You're in about the $2,000 price point for this one. This is a twin piston. This is the turbocharger. The supercharger that I reviewed about four years ago is in about the $1,600 price point. It's a single piston version of this, otherwise it's identical. And um, the main difference is, is this just fills quicker. It fills your large tanks quicker. This isn't really meant for air guns. Doesn't mean you can't hook it straight up to your air gun and fill your air gun, but it's really not designed for that. It's big, it's heavy, it weighs like 85 or 90 pounds, something crazy like that. It does have little caster wheels on the ground. I did wheel it from the office up here to the kitchen to make the video, but it's not really something that, that, that moves. This one specifically has been here for two years. It's got about 25, it's got exactly 25 hours on it. Uh, the turbo, or excuse me, the supercharger, which I had here for about three years, um, had about 35, 40 hours on it, something like that. And between those 50, 60 hours combined, it's been flawless performance for me. Now, full disclosure, it lives in my air conditioned office. It's not in a damp basement. It doesn't sit, you know, outside in, you know, in, in the salt wind down by the seashore. It doesn't live in my musky garage. Actually, my garage is air conditioned. I don't have a musky garage, but I think you get the idea. It's lived a good life. So, and, I, and I've taken good care of it. But um, it's been an excellent machine and it'll fill, well, I've done a full review on this one about two years ago and go four years back and you'll see a full review on the $1,600 supercharger. And, 
that'll give you how long does it take to fill an air gun, a 100 cubic foot bottle, you know, these sorts of things. It takes you all through setup and maintenance. So you guys can go see all that over on the other channel. But just to walk you around here really quickly, it's 110 volt. You just plug it into, you just plug it into the wall at home. It plugs into the machine. I leave this unplugged all the time. We get a lot of lightning here in Central Florida. Tampa Bay is actually considered uh, like the lightning city of, uh, of, of the world. They get like more lightning here than any other, uh, any other city in, in the country. So I leave this unplugged as I do a lot of my electronics here. So it doesn't see any power surges or anything like that. But um, this here is a master on off switch. And what this does is this turns on the water pump. This is a liquid cooled unit. It has a radiator and fans just like your automobile would. My modern day computers are liquid cooled. My computer that I use for cutting and processing and rendering these videos uh, is liquid cooled as well. That is a huge upgrade in itself over an air exchanger as far as efficiency and ability to pull off heat. That's good for reliability and that's good for, for performance of the machine. So you'll flip on the fan and I'll demonstrate this better plugged in with this little guy over here, the new one. You hit, you, uh, you set your dial to the PSI you want it to fill your gun or bottle to. You hook it to your, your gun or bottle and, um, and you hit the start button and it, start, it starts filling for you automatically. Um, these little dials here are for the auto moisture purge. You can ask this thing to purge the moisture in the lines or the system every two minutes if you want, every six minutes, every 10 minutes, whatever. And you can also change the purge duration. Does it purge for half a second or a second or three seconds or whatever? You can control all those things. Purging is good. It gets the moisture out of the system, keeps the moisture and water out of your air guns and, and, uh, and tanks uh, as well. But, um, but, it, but well, we'll circle back to the, uh, the moisture thing. But it's not as big a deal as you would think. The main takeaway is you want to let that purge the moisture, you know, fairly frequently, knowing that that adds to the fill time because every time it blows the moisture out of the system automatically while it's filling, you know, it's, it's dumping all the pressure and it has to build pressure back up and then it starts filling the gun again. But, you know, those aren't things that, that really bother me. A little hour meter up here for maintenance. I think it's every eight hours you turn these little grease caps up at the top which force uh, force grease down into the upper cylinder of the pistons these are multi-stage pumps again this one has two pistons and uh, each with their own stages and it has a little bleed valve up at the top and again it's liquid cooled so you can put in here antifreeze you can put in here pure distilled water um, you can it's always good to go to like a, um, an automotive store and get the Presto and 5050. Put that in here if you live in a cold climate or if you live in a climate like I do where we have a lot of salt air, so, that, so to speak. It gets kind of corrosive here in, in Central Florida. But you can run pure distilled water in these things. Um, that's actually the better heat exchanger, but it's good to have some antifreeze in there as well to act, to act as a metal preservative, to act as a lubricant for the pumps and whatever. But with this one, I've always just run the chemical package that it came with, which is a dose of bottled water, a water wetter, and some antifreeze. But if ever I had to top it up, which you can do very easily, you can just unscrew the little cap here, but you can lo actually look through the glass port as it fills. And, um, and you can see if it's ever low, I'll just put a little bit of bottled water in there. Um, but most of these manufacturers will recommend distilled water which I get a lot of questions about. You can run distilled water in here. You just don't want to run the water wetting package that comes with this. Apparently it doesn't play nice with the distilled water. That's why the owner's manual uh, jumps, down, uh, jumps down that path. But um, just to show you around the machine a little bit, um, I'll turn it around here so you can see the back. This here is, um, I want to make sure it doesn't roll off the counter. We're going to have a catastrophe. This is the air intake for the system, and these are the little moisture purges. So every, forget how I have it set. So every um, 10 minutes, every 10 minutes, it, it moisture purges for a, a two second duration, a one, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and you'll get spray that comes out of here. Okay, so that's this compressor. You can actually see. The little heat exchanger. <laughs> you can see the little radiator through here. So it cools just uh, just like your car. Okay, if you want want a 
more value priced version of this exact machine. Again, you can go from this turbocharger down to the supercharger. You save yourself 400 or so dollars, 2000 to, uh, to 1600 And it's every bit uh, as great a machine. They both fill to 4,500 PSI. Um, this one does over here as well. This one and the, uh, the supercharger are made for filling tanks, 75 cubic foot or 100 cubic foot, not so much your air gun, but again, you can do that if, uh, if you want to. Um, I probably should talk a little bit about like uh, moisture and desiccant filters and these kinds of things. So I don't use a desiccant filter. Uh, I know when you go on the forums, the hardcore air gunners, you know, it's kind of like a rite of passage having the inline desiccant filter, which, which is basically one of these guys. It, it sucks up any remaining moisture in the line. But the reality of my world is a little bit more grounded. And this we're going to get into some of the controversial stuff here. And it's, it's not so much that moisture won't and can't hurt your air gun or bottle because it can. But the reality is when you talk to the manufacturers of the air guns themselves, that they build these air guns to be moisture proof on the inside. Uh, at least, at least most of them do. That doesn't mean that all of them, you know, have all of the best components on the inside. There is some brass out there, but most of them are using aluminum and stainless steel and, you know, these types of things. So, so they're pretty darn impervious to uh, to moisture damage. Now, I'm not saying there aren't cases of moisture damage out there. We've all read on the forums where you take apart some 10 year old air gun that was not terribly expensive and the brass valves all chewed up from corrosion and these types of things. That can happen, but the reality is that that's more the exception than the rule. When you really look at this from the top down, from an air gun manufacturer's perspective, how many guns come back due to moisture over five years, 10 years, 15 years. And the reality is that it's really a non-issue. You know, when you look at all the guns they assemble, now you go to a forum and yeah, but I've read about it 10 times over on the forums. Well, the 10 times you've read about it of the 10 million air guns that have been sold, you know, over the last five years, that's kind of how they look at it. So I share that with you because if you have tons of money and you want to buy one of these, go for it. No harm nor foul. I'm very happy for you. But I don't want somebody new coming along feeling like they have to buy an inline desiccant filter or a little cigarette filter to help with the moisture because these machines really do a good job of purging that out of the system. Even if I were to take this outside in humid Florida, it's really going to get rid of most of that moisture and not put it into your gun or at least keep it out of your gun to where it's not going to be problematic for you. All right. Um, I think that that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with the uh, uh, with the uh, turbocharger here. So let's move that out of the way. <clears throat> okay, bottles. So, uh, segueing into this here, I've been using, just to recap, I've been using this Omega for the last two years, 25 hours. It's been perfect for me. I haven't had any problems. Before that, I had the uh, supercharger here for 35, 40 hours. It was problem free for me. And when you talk to people out there, they've been great units. Yeah, they have the occasional problem just like anything else, but believe it or not, even at the 2000 and the $1,600 price point, they're selling these things like Snickers bars. When I visited Air Guns of Arizona, God, I think with the COVID thing, my dating is all messed up. It's probably been two years now, but they had a warehouse just chock full of these things. And they're distributing these things to like 80 dealers across the United States. and and even into like Mexico and, and, and I think Canada too. And, um, and they've, they're everywhere and they've been good units. So just for what it's worth. Why do I use it? I promise you an answer to that question. Well, it's really simple. This brand, this company got behind the channel and said, hey, we want you to review the product, but we want you to hold on to it too and use it for your industrial heavy duty use, commercial grade level of air gun use. And, um, and you know, just enjoy it. I think it takes a lot of confidence for a sponsor to say that. And, um, and I've just never felt the need to change. That doesn't mean that there aren't other good products out there. I'm sure that there are, I'm not saying that. 
It doesn't mean that they can't have a failure with these, but what it does mean is that I, I, I tend to not want to change things that aren't broken. And they've been really good for me for five years using them at the level that I use, which is a lot, like I shoot most days. Uh, so, so for what it's worth. So on that note, Omega also makes carbon fiber tanks. If you're new to air gunning, this is basically an aluminum bladder wrapped in fiberglass and resin. I don't know if there's actually carbon fiber in these things. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But this is basically the same thing that a fireman or woman would have, would carry on their back. I'm going to pull it out of here so that you know what it looks like. By the way, these, uh, these primal air gun gear bags, you guys ask me about these on the other channel all the time. You buy these at Air Guns of Arizona. They've got one specific to the 75 cubic foot. They've got one specific to the 100 cubic foot. They're about 140 bucks, but they're bad to the bone. They got a little pocket here, which I normally coil this hose up when I travel and I put it right in here. But it's also got a nifty little hose, you know, holder over here. It comes with a nice fat padded shoulder strap, a nice heavy duty handle, the little buckles here for the shoulder strap, a padded bottom so that the thing will lie flat. I lie it upwards all the time. You guys see this in the video all the time when I'm working this. You know, this is what I'm filling the air guns with and have been, gosh, I think this one's been here for four years, maybe five years, and it's been great. It originally came with this valve, which we'll talk about about a year ago or maybe two years ago, I upgraded to, to this valve. But um, let me see if I can get it out of here for you. These whips, by the way, they call these... I think they call them no kink whips, but check this out. Okay, <laughs> I can run air through that. I'm gonna hold that steady so you guys can see that. I can run air through that and I'm gonna undo it and it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I've been using this whip for five years. They're not cheap, this is a $60 whip, but when it comes to my safety, um, you know, I'm a big fan. You can get these with a couple of different Foster Quick Connects on them. These are both stainless steel. As you can see, they're extra long, which fit some of the FX guns better and, and some of those that have the deeper recess in there. These, these stainless steel Fosters, these are uh, in addition to the $60 whip. You can get a standard size. You can get a long size. They're spendy. I don't remember how much they were, but I think it's somewhere between like $30 and $80 or something crazy like that but uh, just something to be mindful of. But you get what you pay for. Again, five years of commercial use, and I've never had a whip failure, all right? And, and it happens, guys and gals. All right, so let's pull this out of here. All right. All right, so this is the Omega 100 cubic foot carbon fiber tank. Now I put this boot on the bottom. I got this boot from Joe Brancato probably five years ago and it fits this just fine. It helps me sit it upright in the bag so I can do my deal. But um, this is what they look like. Okay, Omega, these tanks come from Korea. Um, this one here is made in America as is this valve. We'll get, over, we'll get on to that. But long and short, this is a $700 rig as you see it here. With this, uh, with this valve. Now, when I first got it, it came with, um, with this valve. And the only difference between these two valves is, let me sh try to show you, when, you, when you do your fill and then you go to purge the air between the line and your gun, uh, this original valve, you would twist this right here. So you'd twist it to get that, whoosh, you know, bleeding the air between, between the two. And then I believe that like these are still available, but they're not really building them. They've kind of moved on to this line right here. Now, what's cool about uh, this this line, instead of having a twisty guy, it just has a little push button. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but you see the little push button. So there's no more twisty, you just push. Now, this is good for your gun because the, the faster, you don't, you don't want to do, you don't ever want to do like a, a nice slow, like a you know, on your bleed, you want your valve and your gun slamming back shut so it gets a nice tight fill, uh, a nice tight seal. And so when you're working this guy, you want to give it a good spin to boom, get rid of all the air quickly. And that's kind of what this nice push button does. I, I mash this and boom, you get a 
all the air blows out quick, that valve slams shut. It's just better if there's any dirt particles or dust particles in that valve. Um, you know, you're not going to have a leaking or a less likelihood to have a leaking air gun. Okay. What I liked about this was the simplicity and the reliability. What I didn't like about it is having to twist it. It wasn't the kindest thing to the fingers. Okay. Um, this is nice because you can just push it. What I don't like about it is there's two little internal O-rings in here, and if you don't keep them lubricated by putting like a drop of silicone oil in here every once in a while while you purge it, it'll tear up those O-rings. Now, it's easy to fix. You unscrew this dial right here. Uh, uh, yeah, you unscrew the dial, um, push this forward right here, pull the little uh, C-clamp out, then it just, this, this little rig just comes out and it's got a couple little O-rings on there. So it's not a big deal, but, but that's the caveat to, uh, to this. Um, as long as I've got this. So I just, there's, this is full, it's 4,500 PSI in here. And I just opened that all the way and you'll notice the air is coming out slowly. It's because there's a fill restrictor built into this DIN valve. And there was a fill restrictor, um, excuse me, it's in this piece. Yeah, it's not the head. It's in this little, this little DIN fitting, not the valve, excuse me. And you read a lot on the forums about if you fill your air gun too quickly, it'll break. Okay, and I have people correct me in the videos all the time. They're like, you're filling your air gun too quickly. Oh my God, you're gonna blow yourself up or break it. Well, to you guys, I wanna let you know you're having a false alarm, and, and if somebody's told you that, they're having a little bit of fun with you, all right? Now, the reality of a modern-day air gun is that um, most of them will have fill restrictors built into their foster fittings. In other words, their valve, where you, where you, connect, where you connect your tank to the air gun, that valve on the air gun will have a flow restrictor in it, okay? When I talk to the air gun manufacturers that build these air guns, they, they tell me, they're like, no, Steve, the flow restrictor isn't in there so that you don't blow up your air gun. It's there to keep you from filling too quickly so that you don't accidentally overfill your air, your air gun. And that's where, those, that's where things can start getting damaged when the fill pressures exceed what they're supposed to. Not from a not from a perspective of like bursting, because most modern air guns are built to two to two and a half times the working pressure. So if an air gun has a has a, a 300 bar working, let's say an air gun has a 200 bar working pressure, it's going to be built to 400 to 500 bar before you're going to see anything burst. You know, uh, most countries are pretty good pretty good about that, but. The flow restrictor, guys, has more to do with overfilling your air gun than filling it too quickly. Now, a lot of the air gun brands that don't have the flow restrictors and the fosters, they have them inside, built into the regulators. So most of them are really good about that. If you get an air gun that you feel, and you'll know it when you go to fill it that first time, that you feel fills too quickly, then buy, buy a little DIN valve that has a flow restrictor or be very mindful of it. But... I'm mindful of that. I know the air guns that I'm reviewing. I know how they're built inside and out. So the way you see me filling on the other YouTube channel when I go to filming that refill segment is how you can feel confident that you're safely filling your air gun with, uh, without damaging it. Now, that being said, um, if ever you wanted to change your valve, like let's say maybe you wanted to upgrade the valve uh, system, okay? All you need is a little O-ring like this. You just bleed the air in your tank. It's going to take a long time. I stick it in the garage whenever I do these because it gets really loud. I've never had to replace one of these because of leaking, but when I switched from this valve to this valve, I had to. So you can buy these and they slip right on over there, as you can see. And then it just screws into the top of this. Hand tight is fine because the pressure in here is going to seal up against this. Uh, believe you me, you don't need any special, uh, special tools. <clears throat> This little plug on the back of the yoke here, you can add an additional pressure gauge to where you can monitor the pressure of the air remaining in the tank. This gauge on the front does not do that. Um, that tells you how much air is in the gun's tank as you're filling it. 
Now, an upgraded valve like this HP3 here, okay, an upgraded valve like this HP3 here will have both. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, <clears throat> we're gonna get into that. But that's the in and outs of a carbon fiber tank. This is made in Korea. Um, you're a hundred cubic foot. The larger the tank here, excuse me, that's the dishwasher saying that the heat cycle is different. The, or done. The larger the tank here, the more fills you're gonna get to your air gun. Now, one of the common questions I also get on the channel is if I buy this size of tank and and fill it to if I buy a scuba tank and fill it to 3,000 PSI or 31 or 32, 100 PSI like a scuba tank can do, now how many fills am I going to get? Or if I buy a 100 cubic foot carbon fiber tank that's fillable to 4,500 PSI and I have my air gun, how many fills can I get? Guys, there's a really easy way to do that. They have air gun um, filling calculators. Air Guns of Arizona has a really good one on their website. You basically enter the cubic feet of the bottle, how many pressure, how much air pressure is in the bottle, the cubic feet of the, the cubic, usually the cubic centimeters of the re air reservoir on your air gun, your starting pressure, your ending pressure, you plug it all in there and it's going to tell you exactly how many fills you're going to get. So if you're wondering, do I buy a 30 cubic foot tank? Do I buy a hundred? Do I buy a 75? You know, you can actually do the work um, with your air guns at home by just jumping on that calculator and, uh, and making a good buying decision for you. But long and short of it is a 4,500 PSI carbon fiber tank like a fireman would wear um, that's 100 cubic feet is going to give you, it's going to hold a lot more air than a scuba tank, which is of the same size and fillable to only say 3,100 PSI. All right. <clears throat> Modern day air gun compressors will fill these uh, will fill these 4,500 PSI tanks. No, you cannot do it with your shop compressor. I get that question once a week for the last five years. I don't know about y'all shop compressor, but mine only goes to about a, a working pressure of maybe 180 PSI before the pop-off valve goes or the 200 PSI. Air guns usually run between, a normal air gun operating pressure is usually between 2,500 and say 3,500 PSI, so 180 PSI shop compressor and a bicycle pump, neither will work. All right, so, so there's that. Um, let's get into some of the new stuff. So this is what I've been using commercially on the channel for a lot of years now, and it's served me very, very, very well. All right, let's move all this off to the side. <clears throat> Okay, so I got some new stuff to share with you, all right? And that was mostly what this video is supposed to be about. Now, if you are a newcomer here to AEAC, this channel is where I kind of give you a discovery and approach, share some learning as I've learned, slow down a little bit, before you'll get a full review of the products over on the other channel, AEAC Home. So if you're looking for how do I set it up, how do I hook it up, um, how many, how long does it take to fill something? How long does it take to get filled? You know, these sorts of things, that's all going to be in the full review over on the other channel, probably in a week or so from the time that, uh, that this video airs. Okay. But I've received a couple of new products for review here. This is called the Omega trail charger. It is a portable version of Mr. 80 pounder over there. Okay. This only weighs 28 pounds. All right. This is not designed for filling tanks. This is designed for filling your air gun, okay? That being said, this can fill a tank. It is capable. It is built. The same company that builds the Omega Turbocharger and Supercharger also builds the Trail Charger, okay? And much of the interface and the way everything works is identical, okay? What makes this unit dif different is that it's portable, Okay, it'll run off of 110 volts, so plugged into your wall. It'll run off of 12 volts, so hooked to your car battery, all right? And in the cost, I think you're in about the $840 price point here, which is really interesting to me because now you're nipping at the heels of what it costs for one of these. You remember, you're 700 bucks for a 100 cubic foot 
carbon fiber tank and a valve and a fill whip. You know, that's kind of the package. The, the tote is separate, 140, okay? So you're only about $140 difference here. What I also find interesting about this is at $840, you're kind of nipping at the heels of some other entry level compressors that are in the, let's say, six to $700 range. Um, I reviewed the Air Venturi Nomad 2. I've been able to review the Hatsan Spark. I think that Nomad 2 is $700 territory. I think that Spark with its inverter is $450 to $500 territory. And when you step up into this, you're stepping up into an Omega liquid-cooled system, okay? Not only does that make it more reliable, but that makes it exchange heat better, and um, it makes it significantly quieter than those other systems with the roaring fans in it. It's also got the little liquid cooling um, reservoir with the see-through cap up here at the top. Works the same as Big Brother over there. It's got the same grease pot where every six hours you do one full rotation. It's a click rotation, you know, to grease the up, upper cylinder. And that's really it. Like I haven't changed coolant on those things ever. And being inside here, when you look at it, it looks as clean as the day I put it in there. So the maintenance on them is, uh, is really low. But when you handle this, when you pick it up, there's a substantial jump in quality at least I'm not an engineer. I haven't done durability testing. I could be whistling Dixie out of my butt, all right? But this feels much more substantial and it feels of much more high quality than a five or six or $700 machine. And you're only a couple of hundred bucks more. And again, you're nipping at the heels of the tank here. And the reason I say that is now you're in a situation where you can buy either the tank or the portable compressor because the reality is we use this to fill our air gun in the backyard and the farm we leave it in the truck when we go hunt we take it to the shooting range you know we do these kinds of things this can do all of the same things plugged into your car and it also has the flexibility of being plugged in at home it's got a little um, I don't know where it is on here maybe it's internal it is internal on here there's a 110 volt or a 210 220 switch 220 volt switch. So the converter has a lot of flexibility uh, in and of itself. All right. Um, and we're going to talk about this here in a second because this also plays a role in this, this mental image I'm painting for you guys. All right. But let's just put it over here for a second. All right. So the way this works is I'm actually going to plug this in so I can take you through some basics. So if I'm using this at the car, all right, I don't need this. This is only a, this is a converter to convert the 110 volt wall electricity to 12 volt for the system. All right, and again, we'll show you that. All right, here's the fill whip where you're gonna hook this to your gun to fill. It comes with a nice little fill plug. Okay, it's really neat how this kind of rotates around on here for, that, for the uh, flexibility. All right, and these guys are gonna hook to the battery terminals on your car. All right, what do we have here? We have probably enough to get from the battery terminal um, of your car engine. Uh, yeah, and that thing's down on the ground. So if hopefully your car battery is mounted in the corner of your engine bay, and, and you can put that right on there. Or you can probably take this and set this right up on the engine bay. One of the neat things about the uh, trail charger here is you can run it either upright or it's got some feet on the bottom here. You can run it over on its side. It's designed to be used in, uh, in either or. All right. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is I'm a gearhead and I don't want to take for granted that all you guys know this, but your car battery, like if I were to go down to Walmart, buy a car battery and hook these to it just sitting on the counter here, that battery, if it's fully charged and is in good condition, is going to be putting out roughly 12 and a half volts. Okay. This is not toy grade. This is a 250 watt, 25 amp, liquid cooled, multi-stage um, compressor. It, it draws some juice. Okay. Now that 12 and, a half, 12 and a half volt car battery, if it's fully charged and in good shape, when I put that in my car, and I start my car engine and my alternator is running, now that 12 and a half volt car battery 
is making upwards of 15 volts, usually high 14s on most modern day cars. That's gonna be a lot healthier for your battery and that's gonna be a lot healthier for your compressor. It's gonna do a better job. It's gonna be less load on it, getting that more, amp, getting more amps, watts, and voltage out of uh, your car. So if I owned this, I'm using this with my car engine running. I'm not saying that you have to. I'm not saying it's gonna break if you don't. It won't, but it's better for everything. It's better for the battery. It's better for your car. It's better for your compressor, and your gun will fill quicker. So. Let me just put that in your mind as far as how it's designed to be uh, designed to be used. Okay, but a lot of people are going to use this at home too, right? So if I'm going to use it at home, all I do is take my little 12 volt connectors here and I hook them to the terminals on the uh, on the converter over here. All right, positive is red. I'll show you how this goes. It's really easy. Okay, just hooks on just like that. Negative is black. All right, and then I'm going to take my three prong grounded end here and I'm going to go plug it into uh, plug it into the wall over here. So excuse me. All right, so when I plugged this into the wall, let me get this out of here so it's not too confusing for you guys. Let's just do this. Okay. It stows away nicely here. There's also a little hook on it there if you wanted to hook it to anything. All right. But when I plug in this, this, uh, this converter, it's got little rubber stops on the bottom here so it sits nicely on the countertop. You'll hear this electric fan going, okay? That's a good thing. That's how you know that it's gonna be able to provide power to the compressor over here. All right, very quiet. I'm gonna talk very quietly right now. Very quiet compared to other converters that I've, that I've been able to review, all right? Now, when I flip this switch here on the trail charger, it's going to start the water pump and the water pump only on the unit, okay? So here we go, okay? So what you're hearing is you're hearing a cooling fan, like on the radiator of your car, blowing over, I can feel it on my hand here, the heat exchanger, the liquid cooled heat exchanger, okay? And if I look in my little glass cap here, or take the top off, I'm actually gonna be able to see the water circulating in there. That's a good thing. Now something to be mindful of, the owner's manual and the instructions go over this, but um, one thing you want to do when you first get this is make sure that this has adequate water in it. There's a, a water return, like a spout, and you want to bring the water level right up to the bottom of that water return. Run it a couple times like I'm doing here, and, um, and that'll put you in a good place with that. Because you want to make sure that the capacity is maximum, so it does the best job it can cooling, all right? This has a 30 minute duty cycle. The owner's manual says you typically don't wanna run this for more than 30 minutes at a time without a 20 minute cool down. Now it's gonna fill your air gun bottle in, I'm guessing two, three, four, five minutes, something like that, but something like this is gonna take like days, <laughs> okay? Or, it could easily take six, eight hours, something crazy like that. So this really isn't for this, <clears throat> all right? So then what you'll do is you'll hook this to your air gun, all right? And then up on top here, there's a dial. This is a 4,500 PSI compressor. The factory actually rates it to like 5,000 PSI or something crazy like that. It does have a burst disc on it, which will automatically burst, I'm guessing, if you exceed 4,500 PSI by too much, okay? But the little dial here, you set it to the PSI that you want it to pump to, okay? And you set it to the PSI that you want it to pump to. Let's do it this way. You set it to the PSI that you want it to pump to, and then it's gonna automatically bring the gun up to that pressure for you, and then it's gonna automatically shut off, okay? 
there's a moisture purge here, okay? Once the gun is filling, you want to open this very quickly, like with a good spin. You don't want to slow bleed this. Open up with a good snap. It's going to blow all the water out of the system, out of this little hose right here. And that acts as a, a moisture barrier between atmosphere and your gun. Like we talked about earlier, if you want to run an inline desiccant filter for somebody, you can, but I don't want you guys feeling like you have to do this. I have never done this. And I have air guns that are 10 plus years old and I've never had a problem with the insides of them. Not saying it can't happen, just want to discuss that, a little bit of myth busting. I know that one of y'all is going to come along and say, oh, but it happened to me, I took my gun apart and I destroyed it. It happens. The reality is that's more common with hand pumping than it is with these types of compressors. Or if you go to a scuba, a scuba shop, a dive shop, a paintball facility, a paintball shop, a fire, fire department, and get this filled up with like super arid dry air. All right. It's not really a problem with these types of compressors. I don't know if this is auto moisture purge yet. I'm guessing it is not. Maybe it is. I'll find out when I get into reviewing it next week and that'll all be in the main video for you. But if it's not, no big deal because it's going to fill an air gun probably I'm guessing in somewhere between two and five minutes depending on the air gun and the charge and stuff. And if it doesn't have an auto moisture purge and for some reason it takes 10 minutes to fill your air gun at the five minute mark, you can always come over here and just go a quick little poop poop like that and blow the moisture out of it and, and you're done, okay? But this is a set and forget type deal. You set it to the PSI you want it to stop at and then you're gonna tell it to fill. The grease pot, remember you turn, you rotate that one full turn every six hours. It lubricates the upper piston in the cylinder and the pot itself is refillable. It's really easy, you just unscrew the entire thing. The Trail charger comes with another syringe full of, I think it's white lithium grease. It's what it looks like and smells like. And it comes with a tool bag. It comes with some O-rings and all these cool tools on, I'm guessing, how you can take this thing apart. Although I don't know why you'd, uh, why you'd want to. Just like Big Brother over there, the air filter, or the air intake and the filters on the back there. All right. All right, so let me let you hear what this sounds like. So let's plug this in. All right, and let me actually go get an air gun. Now nah, you don't need to, because we got this guy. <clears throat> so it'll come with this little plug, which is really handy for testing the unit, for testing the auto shutoff, um, which is a really good idea to run that every once in a while. Um, it doesn't take long to fill up the whip here and make sure that that's working properly. If you're the type that's gonna walk away from this while, it, while you're filling your air gun, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's set this to Let's set it to 4,000 PSI, all right? Now, when, you, when I first start these units, okay, I like to start them with the bleed valve in the open position. It takes the load off of the, uh, takes the load off of everything when you first start it, all right? Okay. And that's what it sounds like. The puffing you're hearing is because the air's coming out of here instead of filling up the hose. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna be quiet so you guys can hear what it actually sounds like. And we'll see how long it takes to fill this hose up to 4,000 PSI. There's 2,000. And I'm going to talk over this a little bit so you guys can hear. This is the quietest portable compressor. I've experienced thus far. There it is. It just hit 4,000 and automatically shut off. All right? Something just blew off the counter. Hopefully it wasn't that important. I think it was the TV remote. <laughs> All right? Now, if I've run this for five minutes or so to fill up an air gun, it's not a bad idea to let that pump run for 30 seconds to make sure that you know, you're not kind of entrapping that cylinder in super hot air. Especially if you're gonna be crazy and try to fill something like this. I'd be running that pump for a couple of minutes, you know, during those 30 minute filling, 20 minute cooling, those cycles that the owner's manual says to do if you do wanna uh, fill up a tank like this or a, or a pygmy tank, okay? And then you just shut it off and that's really all there is to the machine. 
All right. Unplug this guy and you'll hear this shut down. Okay. And it's it's just a neat deal, guys. It, 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 it's nice and compact. You know, if you're not going to um, use the converter here and you're taking it into the field, we show you this all closed up. Oh, for me, I was super excited to get this for a couple of reasons. One, as you guys know, the field where I film, the full reviews has been flooded since the end of August when we did the Avenger review, which happens every year here. It usually happens earlier. I got lucky this year and it flooded kind of late. Well, between August and now, we've had not nearly as much rain, especially the last two weeks. It's been relatively warm, dry, and windy. So all of that is drying out very nicely. If you're wondering where the Day State Red Wolf full review is, as soon as I get this knocked out next week, I'll be out there. Uh, the landowner was telling me um, Friday, a week ago today, that it's drying out nicely. And I should be able to get out there uh, hopefully next week or, the, or that weekend. All right. But uh, so that's, uh, that's part of the reason. But the other reason is it really intrigued me that at $840, I'm really getting close to $700. And now it becomes, well, do I pick this or do I pick this? And um, I, I don't know. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down, uh, down below. But this is ever providing, right? This needs to be refilled from either that, this, or paintball, dive shop, fire, whatever. So if I'm on a budget and I only have X amount of dollars to spend, I'm probably gonna turn my wallet in this direction, right? So, but yeah, this is the unit. It's 28 pounds. Like I said, you can run it down like this, you know, and have all of this accessible. That's what that looks like. I'll turn it around to you guys square. Got a nice clean design to it. For servicing, it looks like you just take off the screws around here. And this outer shell probably just pulls right off. There's the back. There's the piston. You can actually see the sleeve for the piston, the air intake. Um, and then the front face here. Here, I'll give you a good look at the top here. So here's that dial I was telling you about where you set to the PSI you want, up to 4,500 PSI. I actually tested this and, and I put it on Instagram the other day. Um, I'm on Instagram, hooked on air. Lots of photographs and tech notes of the day by day. If you want to follow along there, also Facebook hooked on air. I also have a website, aaconline.com, and two YouTube channels. All right, um, infomercial. But there's there's your water reservoir. Here's your grease pot. This just unscrews here to access it. This screw at the top has the clicks on it. One every I think it's four to six hours, something like that. Read the owner's manual. And uh, that's really all there is to it. And these big carry handles. Uh, the bottom, doesn't look like there's anything on the bottom. All right, so that's, that's the deal. So, I don't know, it seems like an awfully great alternative. All right, so on the topic of these tanks and 700 bucks, I also find it very interesting. This is a top of the line tank, all right? This has been great for me. This is a top of the line valve. This is all good stuff. This is 700 bucks made in Korea, 100 cubic feet, all right? With the fill hose, with my whip and my little ends. It comes as a little package like that with my foster fittings. What I find interesting is $700 will also buy you an all made in America tank and an upgraded HP3 valve, also made in America. All right, well, I'm gonna take it out of the out of the uh, the gun the primal gun gear bag here, so you guys can see this. By the way, guys, all these other pumps, these big compressors, Omega comes from China. Some of you have a real problem with that, and I'm not saying that I don't have a problem with it from the source of us, you know, sourcing out a lot of our jobs and pharmaceuticals and supplies out to another country. I'd love to keep all that here in the United States as much as the rest of the guy, but as much as the next person. But a lot of the feedback I get is, it comes from China, it's junk. Well, guys, I hate to tell you, your iPhones come from China, all right? Look it up, that's where they're built. <laughs> so, you know, that's a country that's very, very capable. 
All right, so check this out. But if for some reason you have an aversion to all that, all right, there's now available the Omega Patriot. All right, this is a 75 cubic foot tank as opposed to 100 with an upgraded valve with the cool little Patriot, all made in America. I guess if you want to get technical, that little gauge right here probably comes from China. <laughs> but all the rest of it is all made in, made in America. And it's 700 bucks. And that's 700 bucks. So, and it comes with a nice fill whip, you know, the, the three foot long fill whip with the nice extra long stainless fosters on the end. So that kind of pricked my ears. Um, that's a nice deal. It really is. Considering that this valve by itself is like a $350 upgrade <laughs> to this guy over here. So kind of this becomes a bargain. You know, this valve by itself is like a $350 piece. Not that this is a bad valve, but this is valve over here is doing some different stuff. All right, now that you've seen the tank. All right, let me put it back in its bag so I can uh, handle it properly. By the way, if you, you notice that this is the 75 cubic foot bag. That is also the 75 cubic foot bag. I have the 100 foot... <laughs> I have... These are both 75 cubic foot bags and I've got both the 100 cubic foot bottle and the 75 cubic foot bottle stuffed into each of them. That's why they kind of fit differently. So if you wanted to, you can get a 100 cubic foot bag that'll fit this a little bit better. The price is the same. I think they're each about a buck 40. Okay. This thing's been awesome. It's been through hell and back and it's, this thing doesn't even have so much as a fray or a stitch popped anywhere on it. And I use the Jesus out of that. Even the bottom. Even the bottom isn't wearing. It's got some discoloration, but I mean, it's been phenomenal. That ballistic weave nylon. All right, so let's get it back in here. Best way to do this is just to set it on the ground and drop the bag in it, or drop the bottle in it. All right, so we can talk about this valve. So the HP3 valve is an upgrade. What makes it an upgrade? All right, how am I gonna do this? I'm going to angle this to where you guys can see it. Well, I guess the first upgrade is that it's got two gauges on it. It's got a gauge to monitor the pressure in your air gun. And then it's got a gauge on the back that tells you how much air is left in the bottle itself. I've got 4,600 PSI in here. Um, courtesy Omega turbocharger over there. Filled it pretty damn quick too. Um, I'd say less than two hours from zero. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Maybe more like 90 minutes. It was, it was pretty quick. I actually let a, I, fill, I did fill, fill it for about an hour and I let it cool down. Um, and then I, uh, I let it cool down for oh, probably three, four hours. And then I put like another half hour on it and it was done. Fast filling compressors are not always your friend in the moment. Like I have a day state uh, three or four piston coultry out in the garage, which is the same thing that the fireman uses when they hook it up to the jaws of death out there on the fire truck to cut people out of like cars that have been crumpled up and stuff. I'm an ex-cop, you know, I've seen that kind of thing a lot. And um, when you fill these really, really quickly, they need a cool down period because once they cool down, it's going to condense and your pre the air is going to condense and the pressure is going to drop. So a slow filling compressor is not a bad thing when it comes to air guns. All right, so you got dual gauges. Um, it's glycerin filled. I know that's so important to a lot of people, even though it doesn't matter. The glycerin only mattered like when you're in, remember like the school bus when you were a kid and you'd like walk out of the school bus to go down the steps and you'd look at the dashboard and the dashboard's going <laughs> like there's a jackhammer on it. That's to protect the internal delicate parts of, it's not needed on an air gun thing, but they put it in there because everybody wants it. There's the plug if you wanted to drain it or fill it yourself. But uh, that's nor here nor there, okay? What's nice about this valve is a couple things, not just the two gauges, but it's got the big fat dial on the, on the top, all right? And over on the side, it has what's kind of the best of the most, both worlds between this valve that I showed you that was kind of the push, the push bleed, and this one I showed you, which is kind of the twist bleed. All right, I like the twist bleed better as I shared with you. 
because it doesn't have those O-rings that I have to keep oiled or they're going to get tore up, right? But remember I shared with you, I didn't like this because it was hard to turn and it was tough on the fingers. Well, they've gone to the, this new one here in the hallway. You can see this, okay? It's about twice the width, so it's easier to grab onto. It's made of brass, so it's and it's knurled. So it's got that like spongy squish when you close it, you know, and so it's just gonna be a lot easier. So that's an upgraded part. Big yoke on the top. I will tell you, um, it's you can see it's missing the DIN receiver up here, which means it's also missing, it has just a foster. Uh, <laughs> you dirty dog. It has just the foster fill right here without all of this jazz, which means it doesn't have a flow restrictor in it, which I actually kind of like because flow restrictors drive me freaking bananas as much as I appreciate them because I don't want to hurt, um, I don't know, an inexpensive air gun that doesn't have some kind of measure of its own like that, or I don't want to accidentally overfill like an air pistol. Um, you know, they're good for that but there's no refl flow restrictor on this. So when I turn this bad boy, all right, that's moving some air. So it's something you wanna be mindful of. Avid air gunners prefer this. Now, I have the control. I can have, I have control over it. Okay, what's nice is, okay, I have the control. It's kinda of like having 500 horsepower on tap you know, driving around in like the Corvette and you don't use it a lot of the time, but it's nice to know it's there if you want to use it. Because if I own a Daystate or an FX or another high-end air gun, like a Rapid Air Weapons or maybe an Air Arms, or it's just one of those really nice brands. There's so many of them. And if I forgot you, I don't mean anything by it. But, you know, those guns can take a quick fill. It's not going to, it's not going to kill them. Now that doesn't mean open it up all the way and fill it up in 1.5 seconds, but it means that when you're on the shooting line at the Extreme Bench Rest or the Pyramid Air Cup or the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge and you need to fill relatively quickly, you don't want to be yo-yoing a yoke fighting a restrictor. Now, you can take the restrictor valve here. <clears throat> if you want to buy one of these, don't be afraid of it because you can remove the restrictor piece. All right? You just unscrew the DIN valve, you put an Allen in there, you unscrew it, and it comes right out. It's literally an Allen grub screw that's all the restrictor is so you know not to be afraid of it but this is more of like a big boys type of setup right here i appreciate this um when all of this is over and the dust settles with this video and the full review i'm going to see if air guns of arizona will let me keep this hp3 valve and put it over here on the 100 cubic foot tank because uh, that would be really ideal for me i like that that flexibility i like the big the big yoke, I like the dual gauges, and I like the uh, I like this brass with the big knurled um, purge purge valve over here. Tank's cool too. It's just probably wasteful for me. I probably don't need uh, <clears throat> need two tanks, but seven hundred bucks, and the valve itself is like three fifty, and you still get the whip and all that. So, you know, this is very interesting to me as well. So what have I forgotten to tell you? Hopefully nothing. We've gone over price point, 840, 2000. If you want one of these, but you want one cylinder versus two, still a great machine. Your um, your 1600, your $700 for either tank. Now, if you want to, I know what I forgot to tell you. If you want to get a 75 cubic foot tank with the Korean, Korean bottle on it, um, and this valve, I think you're like 550 bucks. So if you're on a, a real budget, that's gonna be fine. That's all an air gunner really needs. Or a little trail charger over here. This just depends on you guys and your needs and what's important to you and where your priorities lie. Woo. But the, the takeaway is that there's lots of options for you and the price point is getting so compressed with a lot of this stuff that, that I thought it's important that we have some dialogue about it. So what you can expect from here, if you're new, on the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, my primary YouTube channel, um, soon, I'd say within a week, you're going to get a full review of the Trail Charger where I'm going to run it from the car, I'm going to run it from the wall, I'm going to fill up a bunch of air guns with it, give you the times on how long it took to fill them. 
I'll show you specifically service, maintenance, setup, all these kinds of things, <clears throat> and we'll do something similar with, uh, with the new Patriot tank, by the way. <clears throat> okay, and if you didn't get it already, all of this has come to me by way of Air Guns of Arizona out in, uh, out in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Gilbert, more specifically, outside the city of, uh, of Phoenix. So with that, it's good to see you guys again. Um, I'm really excited to get back on track. There's tons of stuff here for me to review. And now that that field is drying up, we're going to be uh, full speed ahead starting in the, the next week or two as soon as I get this video knocked out. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope this video finds you well. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.